Hey everyone, Carl Schilling here again with you. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of the Advocacy Network, and I wanted to tell you real briefly that, um, you know, when I started advocacy, it was all about helping people avoid financial victimization, which uh, uh, comes in all forms, scams, fraud, predatory sales tactics, especially uh, on that side of it, okay? Uh, when it comes to lending and some other issues, you know, there's a lot of predatory sales tactics and uh, financial services as well. So uh, to date, we've saved, uh, I'm very proud of that, we've saved $15 million for our, our members and, and the people who uh, we've helped and our clients. And so today, what I wanted to talk to you about was um, this idea, this concept. Uh, back in, uh, when I wrote a book, uh, who started the Advocacy Network, I wrote a book called You Might Be Getting Scammed When. And uh, <clears throat> I was able to interview 16 people who had been victimized by Bernie Madoff. Now, um, that's very hard to do, you know, in a sense, because most victims won't talk to you. Less than 17% of uh, financial uh, uh, victims will ever discuss their victimization. That's why they don't report it to police. That's why in a lot of cases, sadly, it's the perfect crime, because so few people want to admit to the fact that they were financially victimized. Um, so anyway, in this discussions with these 16, uh, uh, these 16 uh, clients of Mr. Madoff, uh, turns out that uh, eight of them, all, you know, half, it was eight or nine of them also at the same time, not only were they getting scammed by Bernie Madoff in the midst of that Ponzi scheme, but they were participating in a second Ponzi scheme, which was with uh, Stanford out of Houston. So um, both those Ponzi schemes blew up about the same time when the markets really kind of started crashing in 07, 08 those Ponzi schemes were exposed. But um, had that not happened, had the market not adjusted, th those Ponzi schemes would have never been exposed. They would have still been running rampant. But what I want to talk to you about today is uh, uh, with 44 years experience, I've been around the financial services industry. I've been involved in that in selling as a sales professional, uh, working with clients directly on both um, um, life insurance as well as you know, investment side, the other investment side. Um, I like to call it chocolate and peanut butter. I've also uh, had a real estate license for over 20 years. So I was heavily involved in the real estate side, uh, again, on that as well. And that uh, basically um, uh, brought me into sales training, coaching salespeople. And uh, I had a little uh, brief uh, tour through what's called investor relations, which was a real eye opener. And that's why I wrote the book, you might be getting scammed when. So my point to everybody today is that over those 44 years, there's only been one asset that I have witnessed, been a part of, and helped many, many clients with, and, and that's been safe, comfortable, recession-proof, and it is it has come through all storms. It's come through all storms. No one's ever been hurt. No one's ever lost a dollar, and that's life insurance. The proper use of life insurance and the proper design of life insurance, there's nothing that can beat it. Now, it's not an investment, so it shouldn't be compared as such. However, from a growth perspective, from a long-term usage perspective to grow tax-free liquidity and grow tax-free income, there is no comparison between anything else, okay? And as I said, no one has ever lost money in, in, in that arena, okay? They haven't been scammed, defrauded, or part of some form of a Ponzi scheme or something uh, of that nature. Um, the the uh, monies with insurance companies, life insurance companies have been the safest, safest corridor possible. Life insurance companies did not blow up and explode in 2007 and eight. Some of them had been doing some banking. Some of them had uh, you know, wanted to pitch out and, and put their foot in the banking side. And because of that, they did, they did suffer some pain and injury, but not their life insurance side, okay? Uh, most uh, life insurance carriers are uh, 100 years old plus. Um, I can find you a couple that are 150 years old, and uh, they've been doing business uh, for all those years and have never gone under. Now, during that period of time, um, the uh, failure of life insurance companies is, is almost uh, non-existent on a life insurance company failure, okay? Uh, banks, every year, every year, you can measure that in the hundreds of, uh, hundreds of banks that fail, okay? So again, 
uh, life insurance is one of the safest asset to, uh, bases I've ever seen. Now, I'm, I'm going to briefly just explain to you real quickly why, okay? Now, we work still with a lot of clients. I have clients now who are retiring with tax-free income, uh, and those tax-free incomes are 50000 75,000, even over six figures, depending on what they did with their life insurance, how they set it up and what they wanted to have. Okay, so that's all tax-free income. That, that income that they're going to get does not touch uh, their Medicare Part B premiums, which by the way, if you have a 401k and you have taxable income coming in retirement, guess what? It's means tested. So if you're getting a lot of income over and above whatever the government thinks is a, is, a, is a test level, then you're going to pay a higher Part B Medicare premium. They don't usually tell you that. Um, you're also uh, going to be subject to a certain amount of taxation on your Social Security. They don't tell you that either. So again, tax-free income, it has no bearing on Social Security, Part B, Medicare. It has no bearing on the rest of your life at all. Just tax-free income. Okay, um, which is uh, which is uh, is a beautiful thing, obviously. Now, um, the dynamics of this, but it has to be set up properly. And there's too many. Uh, uh, there are too many agents out there in home offices that are teaching agents, and it's not set up properly. So if it's not set up properly, it's not going to do what you wanted it to do. It's not going to look the way it should look, and it's not going to have the experience that you want it to have. So it's real important who helps you through this. Now, uh, again, uh, I'm over 44 years in, in uh, exposed to this, and um, I know what needs to be done with a life insurance contract, okay? Um, I'm always learning, too. I'm, I'm always looking for new and better ways, but, uh, but again, there's a lot of experience in my organization, just a, a great deal of experience, and we've got clients who have all reached financial independence due to the work we've done with them. So in closing, I'm going to share with you just a couple of dynamics because you get so much bad information about life insurance. You have uh, radio talking heads, you have uh, uh, magazine financial articles where they'll tell you that, uh, that life insurance, whole life insurance is a ripoff and all these other things, okay? So let me explain to you the dynamics of how that's uh, totally wrong. And it should never be compared to an investment anyway. It's, it's apples and oranges, Okay. Investments are one thing, but investments come with, uh, with a definite negative side risk. Uh, any investment comes with a negative side risk. That means you could lose your whole investment, okay? There's, there's no doubt about that. That exists in every investment, okay? Now, you have, uh, you have things in the middle, CDs at banks, things of that nature. But again, uh, the bank CDs are, 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 are basically useless with what the banks want to pay you back. And the banks get to use your money incredibly so. Um, so you're really helping fund them to do the things they do. They're not giving you much return. Now, the, um, the side of the life insurance side, the reason why life insurance grows and why whole life insurance is such a magnificent tool is that real quickly, when you build a life insurance contract, if it's built properly, it's going to be overfunded meaning that we put in as much money as we can put into it without hitting what's called a modified endowment contract, which takes away the tax advantages. So that means that we're not gonna have the maximum amount of death benefit that you could get in that whole life policy because that would mean that an agent was getting the maximum commissions. So what we're talking about doing is getting in the maximum amount of cash in the form of uh, paid up additions and getting the death benefit down to the lowest portion where it can be so that the cash value grows as rapidly as possible. Okay, that's number one. Number two, all this talk about dividends. Let's, let's clarify that right up front. A dividend is a repayment of an overcharge for your premium. In the early years on a whole life contract, because there's a cash value built in, the cash value is what's taking it out to what's called um, endowment, meaning that you get all the way to the point where the amount of the premium you put in equals the amount of death benefit that you've got. It's endowed. It's endowed, right? So that's what a cash value is. Cash value is a, a actuarially defined amount of money each year that is taking you towards endowment. That's over here in cash value. Now, on this side is dividends, where the company is establishing a dividend. Now, recently, most of the companies we deal with right now are five, five and a half percent, and they've been that way 
you know, the lowest uh, companies at 4% have been that way for literally hundreds of years. So somewhere between four, five and a half, maybe 6%. <clears throat> and if interest rates go up, dividend scales go up too. So let's just say you're getting a five and a half percent dividend. So at the end of year one, <clears throat> on your dividend side, added into your cash value pool goes a five and a half percent dividend. Okay. Now year two goes a five and a half percent dividend, but also five and a half percent compounding from last year's dividend because the dividend pool is growing. So it's growing at a 5.5% compound interest on the dividend side. Okay, not your total cash value, just your dividends. So these dividends are starting to grow pretty rapidly because they're compounding. Okay, now your cash value is not compounding because there's nothing crediting it other than an actuarially designed amount. So that's automatic. Now, the combination of your cash value and your dividends are your available liquidity at any given point in a contract. So you have the availability to take those <clears throat> that money out Okay, as a loan, you have as tax free. You have the amount, the ability to take that out. So let's just say you had. Um, um, <clears throat> uh, we've recently worked with a lot of real estate professionals on this. Let's just say you have uh, some uh, assets that you're a little concerned about because the market may be overpriced and maybe things are not where they should be. So you want to uh, get into something else, but at the same time you want to stay liquid so that you could go back when the market shifts. Well, life insurance perfect place. If it's built right, if it's built right uh, from year one, you have about 60% to 70% of your premium that you paid in year one. About 60 to 70% is, is right there at the end of year one. So you're totally liquid on 60 to 70%, the same every year, okay? And it's growing. Now, if you, if you want to take that at any point in time, you can. You wanna pay it back, obviously pay yourself. That would be a great thing. But again, if you need to want to move back into, say, the stock market, because the stock market is uh, um, uh, a little bit overpriced right now, so, well, it's heavily overpriced, but at the same time, you've got a place where your monies could be working for you, protecting your family, doing some other things, and you're liquid. You're liquid, so you can borrow it back, and you go back in the stock market at any point in time that you feel like it, okay? Now, and, and the last piece of this is the massive liquidity would be that you decide, okay, I'm just going to use this asset for my retirement. I'm not going to, I'm funding, I'm going to finance my retirement with this asset. That's it. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to blow up my 401k. I'm going to blow up my qualified plans. That's, that's another discussion that we can have with you, show you all kinds of ways out of that and reasons why. And I'm going to finance my retirement through the use of life insurance, make it a life insurance retirement plan. Okay. Total tax free income. Depending, I could get that all the way up to six figures, depending on what you what you plan on doing, okay? Your age and how much you're going to put into your plan and how much you're allowed to put in above and beyond the MEC corridors, okay? So that's in a nutshell, okay? I don't want anybody, so stop letting these people give you the bad advice and tell you all of this. It's a, it's a form of liquidity that also, by the way, creates a separate liquidity pool that you can't get anyplace else. That liquidity pool protects you from the use of the death benefit, premature use of the death benefit in another liquidity pool in case you have chronic, critical, or terminal illness. Nothing else will do that for you. By the way, that does not touch your cash value liquidity or your dividends. It has nothing to do with that. The liquidity for the chronic, critical, and terminal illness all comes from the death benefit prematurely. So understand this tool. This is the greatest financial tool ever created, ever created. And um, the only issue is you can't get too much of it, but you have to be healthy to get it. You have to do it when you're healthy and you have to understand the dynamics and have an agent, a professional, who knows how to set up this plan without being piggish and trying to take all the commissionable income humanly possible, because that will hurt you badly, okay? And that will be a predatory sales tactic, honestly. And, and quite frankly, I'd like to say that it doesn't exist, but it exists way too much. So we've done thousands of these plans. I train financial concierges every day to work with clients I still work with clients. 
The bottom line is this is the greatest asset. It's a unique asset. It's an asset that will create tax-free liquidity at any point in time. It'll create tax-free income at any time that you want for it, okay? And the longer term aspect of it, if it's looking at a retirement side, it'll create tax-free income all the way out until right into your 90s, right into your 90s. In some cases, even to 100, but, but right into your 90s. So well beyond life expectancy, you can have that, that uh, tax-free income. Well, anyway, thank you so much. I hope that this helps. And uh, we're available all the time, as you know. You can reach me at 321-947-3220. Be glad to speak to you anytime. You can go out to theadvocacynet.com, theadvocacynet.com, download the Middle Class Millionaire Plan, our, our most recent book. Um, and um, we will, uh, for a consultation, I make you a free member of the Advocacy Network where we've saved people $15 million. So you'll be protected against all forms of financial uh, victimization, scams, fraud, anything that could happen to you. So again, thanks for your time. I hope this little primer helps. And I hope uh, that uh, it gives you some things to think about. We can build these middle-class millionaire plans. This is not just for the wealthy. Believe me, um, whether you're making thirty-five, dollars $50,000 a year uh, or you're making one hundred or fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 a year, we, we know how to set these things up for you, okay? So uh, again, my name is Carl Schilling. Thanks for your time. Uh, have a magnificent day.